Market to Market is everywhere you are. Subscribe to Market to Market on YouTube, find us on the PBS video app to stream on demand, and add our three podcasts on your favorite podcasting app. Tonight, I say to the Russian oligarchs and the corrupt leaders who built billions of dollars off this violent regime, no more. The United States. Shockwaves from Europe's largest military conflict since World War II reverberated in President Biden's first State of the Union address this week. In addition to highlighting gains on jobs, the economy, and legislative victory on infrastructure, the chief executive dropped an exclamation point on growing global condemnation of Russia's unprovoked incursion into neighboring Ukraine. A Russian dictator invading a foreign country has cost around the world. And I'm taking robust action to make sure the pain of our sanctions is targeted at Russian economy and that we use every tool at our disposal to protect American businesses and consumers. The United Nations declared one million refugees have fled Ukraine since war broke out, and over 200 civilians have been killed, largely due to artillery shelling, rockets, and airstrikes. While all ports were closed due to the invasion, this week Ukrainian officials confirmed Russian forces had seized the strategic Black Sea port of Kyrgyzstan, with other seaports under siege or encroached upon, reminiscent of Russia's 2014 military annexation of Crimea. Yes! Yes! Despite a glaring disparity among military casualty estimates between the U.S., Ukraine, and Russia, sanctions have been strong and swift. Western nations have frozen assets tied to Russia's central bank, blocked international monetary transfers and energy projects, banned import and export of goods, services, and technology to Russia, and restricted Russian airlines from entering their airspace. The U.S. and EU also have sanctioned Putin himself, Russian high officials, and billionaires associated with the regime. While the actions and more announced by businesses and sports organizations to shun Russia have served to devalue the ruble by 30 percent and cause indefinite closure of the Russian stock market, more is brewing in Washington. We're failing to hit Putin where it hurts the most. Forty percent of the revenue of the Russian economy comes from oil and gas. Republicans are asking Democrats to do this. It will increase prices here at home. There's no doubt. Midweek, senators called attention to the 600,000 barrels of oil the U.S. buys daily from Russia and hinted an aid package was forthcoming as oil prices spiked into record territory. We have to step up to the plate. That means basically reversing some of the decisions that have been made, but no leasing, not drilling, and basically cutting back. We need energy independence more now than ever before. The West left Russia a sanctioned loophole by continuing to allow access to hard currency via sales of its vast oil supply. The United States has worked with 30 other countries to release 60 million barrels of oil from reserves around the world. Though Biden pledged a flood of 30 million barrels of oil from domestic coffers would blunt rising gas prices, financial pundits called the measure a short-term fix. It's not going to be an economic impact for us. It doesn't move a lot for retail or wholesale. The bars don't buy it, so it kind of just sits on the shelf anyways and gathers dust. Even as the president touted a new semiconductor factory outside Columbus to combat automobile supply chain and price tag woes exacerbated by COVID, Ohio, along with several other states with government-run wine and liquor suppliers, ceased the purchase and sale of Russia-sourced alcohol. Another of those states was Iowa, whose Republican governor gave the rebuttal to Biden's State of the Union. And instead of moving America forward, it feels like President Biden and his party have sent us back in time. While the Biden administration has been plagued by the highest inflation rates in 40 years, the president called on companies to lower costs, not wages, and focus on American infrastructure and innovation while lessening reliance on foreign supply chains the ultimate effects on the U.S. economy. Even as the Federal Reserve is expected to raise rates in the next few weeks to help combat inflation, analysts are sounding the alarm that the Ukraine crisis could cause stagflation, marked by rising costs and limited economic growth. As a result, some investors are bearish on stocks and have started to favor safe havens like gold and silver, along with a move into commodities and buying up grain contracts. 
Ukraine accounts for 16% and 12% of respected world corn and wheat exports, while Russia supplies 17% of wheat across the globe, and planting season is just around the corner. Livestock producers would feel the downside of rising feed costs, but one of the largest agricultural impacts long term could be on fertilizer markets. Russia is a key world player, and sanctions could choke supplies of ingredients like potash. But only time will tell how current world events will trickle down to the farm. We're the only nation on earth that has always turned every crisis we faced into an opportunity. For Market to Market, I'm Josh Bittner.